Hello. You too. Hey guys, Darren here. Welcome to Mayhem Country Living. Hope you guys are doing okay. Um, <coughs> hope you guys are doing all right wherever it is that you are. Homage to Jay Nall. Cast iron skillet. It's a nice one. Uh, it, it really is. Um, this is one that we purchased from Lodge about three years ago uh, from their uh, defect section, scratch and dent. And some people say, well, I've never seen a defect on it. There is the defect. That's what we got it for 20 bucks as opposed to you know 60 or 70 bucks. Um, I have a cooking hearth in my basement. Now, I have uh, uh, chimneys that go completely from the top to the bottom of the house, all the way from the first floor down into the basement. And the basement's a cooking, cooking hearth, and it was set up that way long before I moved into here. And it does not have a uh, cover over the chimney. So during excessive rain, rain comes in, and I had these sitting in there, and they got a little bit of rust on them. Where she goes, you know. But what I'm going to do is clean them up a little bit. These aren't terrible. And I'm going to show you how I do it. There's a hundred different ways to do it, to uh, clean cast iron, to make it to where you can use it again easily with no rust flavor. That's kicking the butt. It tastes like rust. Now, I have went ahead and oiled this thing and let it sit overnight just to uh, soften up the surface rust. It's all just surface rust. Now, we have several things we're gonna be using. This is uh, Lodge Official uh, Lubricant and Seasoning Spray. Uh, bought that when we bought a bunch of the stuff, uh, the skillets from Lodge. This, and I am not selling it but this is dancing goat iron wax this is from a little uh, family-owned business down here in alabama and they will take your skillets whatever and recondition them to lighten you they will take your uh, soap pots cooking pots the, the big pots you know that kind of stuff i have several and uh, they will sandblast them and recondition them they do good work. So, this is also a chainmail scrub brush uh, that we bought at the Lodge place, I believe it was. And uh, this works really good for loosening up debris on a well-seasoned skillet. Kosher coarse grain salt. This is gonna be really good because we're gonna scrub it. Uh, I have a brass brush. I have a Scott Blue Scrubby. I have a roll of paper towels, and I have some corn oil. And uh, we're going to get started. More time. Now. Okay. There we go. Don't look at my gut. I'm losing it as I'm working it out. Okay. Now we're back. What we're going to do. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in this. Again, this is just the cheapest oil you can get, corn oil. Should not take a whole lot. Coarse ground sea salt. I need something abrasive. And, oh my goodness, I had to reach over this. A brass scrub brush. Uh, why brass? I like it. It's not as aggressive and it conforms nicely uh, to the shape of the pan and my blue scrubby now what we're going to do is start scrubbing this thing out before i do anything else uh before you do anything else hit that like and subscribe button i would really appreciate it It'd go a long way to uh helping us with uh, youtube's algorithms this is going to be the finishing thing once we get this all cleaned up i'm probably going to put this in um, my pellet grill at 500 degrees uh, to re-season it. 
So that's, we're not gonna do it inside the house because that uses a lot more electricity and it heats up the house. So out here is the neat idea. Hey, we might get a little smoke flavor. Okay, now we're back. Yeah, we're a little cocked out of here. There we go, that's better. Now, you can see we've got it cleaned and scrubbed out pretty good, pretty good. Um, we've used half a roll of paper towels. That's good. And uh, we have used our corn oil and sea salt and scrubbed it down pretty dang good. Now, you can use a drill and a wire brush if it's really bad, if it's pitting. You can use a Dremel. Uh, there's a thousand different ways to do this and 90% of the people that, that do this are going to tell you if you're not doing it that way, their way, you're doing it wrong. Do whatever fits your need and the situation. Um, and everybody else can just eat it by the way. But, Put a little bit of oil in here and wipe it down with one more clean paper towel. The outside, I did scrub up a little bit. I'm not as concerned because I will make sure that it gets seasoned as I cook in this. This is one of my traveling skillets that I use when I travel out of town. It's going to be. This is a deep skillet with a handle got a lid you can use this for a lot more stuff than you can the small skillet I'm still going to use a small skillet if you watch any of the videos where I was traveling uh, where I made uh, oh, oh gosh dang it um, uh, salmon steaks and the steak well this is uh, just a bigger version of it so I don't have to cut the steaks in pieces so the grill is smoking. I think we're up to around 200 degrees. It might actually give it a nice kind of smoky flavor, which by the by, whoo, would be wonderful. And uh, again, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm going to get this thing set up, wait for the temperature to come up a little bit more. i to uh, put all these uh, paper towels in the burn barrel. That's what we do. And uh, there we go, guys. And I have put in a couple of spoonfuls of bacon grease, and we're just going to let this guy cook. You can see the discoloration from the rust on the sides. Hopefully, this will take care of that, and uh, we're going to bring it up. We're at 200 degrees right now, so we're going to bring it up to about eh, three or four hundred. There we go. We are through. I brought this guy up to 500 degrees. Oh, I'd already turned it off now. And uh, to where the grease was smoking. And this is So. Now, we'll put this guy over here and just let him sit and cool off because grandkids are coming over. There we go. Pull that out. We're just gonna let this sit and absorb. Hopefully that'll take care of it. And worst comes to worst, we'll do a little bit of bacon for the last time. Okay guys, now we're back and I'll show you the finished product again. Um, I don't know if it was re-seasoning as much as it was just resurfacing. Uh, those little bumps and all that stuff is uh, uh, the bacon pieces that was in the bacon grease. So, what's good? But, we are done and done with this thing. Again, worst comes to worst. I'll fry a pound of bacon. <laughs> Terrible thing. And uh, we'll get this thing done. I needed a bigger skillet for when I'm doing my traveling stuff. The uh, Pit Boss grill is off. It's just cooling down. It has a timer where it cools down and then goes off on its own. That's it. If it's heavily damaged or pitted, you really need to scrub it. You might want to take a drill 
and uh, a, a, a wire brush. You might want to have it sandblasted if it's something really good and really significant. I have a, a Dutch oven that I need to do as well as a roasting pan, one of those big two foot long by one foot with a top on it with a, like the hunter, the hunting scene across the top. You know what I'm talking about, guys. Um, so all of that had sat down there and gotten moisture on it and uh, I just didn't want that. So the way it is, it's how to lightly reseason a Iron skill. Take care of your people.